And I know so many times I pray and I ask the Lord for stuff. And he's like, Sean, listen, I know you want that, but do you really want that? Because it may come with a price. So, Sean, think about what you're thinking about. So think about what you're asking for. So these men are upset that they can't get a battle. They can't get in a fight. So the Lord is like, oh, you want to be in the battle. See, a lot of times the Lord will do things in ways that we don't understand or even imagine. Because they're saying they want a battle. And the Lord said, I give you a battle. I give you a battle. I'm going to see how you are going to respond. Because you, you know how to live when you're reigning. Yep. There you, go. you know how to say God is good when you're reigning and when you're walking in constant victory. You know how to live that way. But what happens when the Lord says no? Right. Come on. What happens when things don't work out right? Come on. So now they arrive, and now what they used to do to other people now has happened to them. No, say the Lord still is good, right? Yes. You a minute ago you said the Lord was good. You said He is good; His, his mercies endure forever. Yeah. So then, when it knocks at your door, how do we respond? So now these people, now they're not saying the Lord is good. Now they're saying, David, it's your fault, bro. We are going to murder you. It's your fault that we are in this situation. Biden, it's your fault. Trump, it's your fault that we are in this situation. Uh -huh. Employer, it's your fault. The Lord is saying, no, like, wh where are you? Are you Saul or are you David? Because one, when one was under the fire, he leaned on his own understanding and he called off, he called the spirits to get instruction. Uh -huh. Sure he did. Yeah. Leaning on his own understanding because it was easy. It was the easy thing to do. It was easy to go to somebody else to say, what should I do right now? Sure. Uh -huh. Instead of being like David said, give me my ephod. Yeah. Come on. Give me my ephod and let me get before the presence of the Lord. Yes. But Saul said, no, it's too, I don't want to do all of that. I want to go to somebody else who will tell me what I should do in this hour. Sure, like it is. And so many of us during this hour, we have gotten lazy. We've been able to watch and participate in church through the internet. It's, we have gotten lazy. How many of us are still out there evangelizing in the grocery store? Remember with those days when we were excited about being saved and, and taking risks and, and making yourself vulnerable and looking for somebody to bless financially or emotionally. Now we're so caught up in ourselves, we're not looking for somebody to bless. We're like, who won't bless me? I need needs. I have needs. There was a day when we wasn't even thinking about ourselves. We're like, who can I sow into? Because I know the moment I sow into you, I'm going to get blessed. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. We don't know what that's like anymore as a collective. As a collective. When people come in and giving testimonies on how the Lord supernaturally did this and did that, we don't give those testimonies anymore because we are so caught up in Fox and, and CNN and, and this and that. We're so distracted. And the enemy was like, yes, I'm winning. I got them arguing. I got them beating, but going back and forth with one another. He, that's the one person that will ever go to jail. <laughs> He get us to do all of this stuff if we, and, and he doesn't get in trouble. He doesn't get in trouble. But we're the ones that get in trouble. We're the ones that's being judged. And the people who are not believers, they're sitting on the side, they're like, look at those Christians argue. They're supposed to be Christians. <laughs> supposed to be Christians. Supposed to be Christians. 
and I get it. We, we all have our stance of what we believe. Let me tell you something. We can be sincere. Come on with it. <laughs> but we can be sincerely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. My wife has gotten good of dealing with me. <laughs> Because she knows what to say, when to say, how to say it, to motivate me to get the best out of me. We was just talking earlier. She's been getting on me to start exercising, going to work out. So every once in a while she's like, are you uh, working out with the fellas today? And I'll come up with an excuse and then she don't say anything. Before she used to just like badger and push and back. That's the way I saw it. And this morning, I was like, you know what? I give you permission to hold me accountable. She was like, no, I'm not. Because you 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 would lash back at me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you would lash back at me. And you come up with an excuse why you didn't do it. I said, listen, the difference is I'm giving you permission. So that's the same, that's the same thing. We, we can be sincere, but sincerely wrong. And my wife, where I say she's so sweet at, she knows exactly how to do it. So just because we can say it, doesn't mean that we should say it. That's true. Come on. Just because we can do it, doesn't mean we should do it. That's right. Because at the end of the day, what's most important? What are we trying to accomplish? Yeah, come on. So I need to think like, okay, what's, what's the wisdom in this? Because I know what you're saying is crazy. So do I go on social media and say it openly? Or do I go in your inbox and have this conversation? Do I invite you for lunch? Well, it take too long. I need everybody. No, that, that's you and your flesh. So the people tripping on David, they yelling. But it's like, yo, why didn't you pull? Do you think David, his intent was to take you to battle and lose your whole family? Right. Do you think that was his, his, his intentions? Yeah. Like that was the dude who was feeding you, who was supporting you, who was encouraging you and praying. Do you think that was his intentions? No. So the first time you get in a battle and you experience lack, you tripping. Yeah. Yeah. So now that you may be in a battle with your spouse, like, yo, who are you? It's under pressure that reveals who you really are. That's true. Under pressure reveals everything. That's true. When you are under pressure, it reveals everything. It shows what you have on the inside of you when you are under pressure. It's true. Yep. They blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> they want to blame it on the pressure. That was already in you. Yeah. And you refuse to deal with it. So those people that David was rocking with, they just maxed it. They was never in a position to have to show it. And sometimes we get frustrated when we see it, but we need to see it. Come on. We need to see it so we can grow. Yeah. Don't judge it. Come on. Love them through it. I work with men in the city. And a lot of these men have a struggle or have a hard time connecting with their children or don't have access. And they struggle being a father, a present father. And I'm like, man, they come to my class all the time and they perfect. That's not who I want to see. That's the fraud. I, I, I don't want to meet the fraud. I want to meet the real you. I need to meet the one that the kids are afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I need to meet the one who cuss out the girlfriend and the baby mama. That's who I need to meet. But when we see that, we, we want to kick them out because it's too hard. We, we're going to go to the soothsayer because they will give us the strategies just to get it.